Donald Trump last weekend marked his first 100 days in office. Those days have been filled with lots of talking points, to say the least. We take a look at what has been achieved by Mr. Trump. Also on the program, we'll be discussing press freedom. Is the Nigerian press freer today than it was a year ago? To close the show today, we'll be talking about an election the whole world is keeping an eye on, the French election. I am Shegun Ojumu, and this is Hindsight. On this program, we'll be bringing you news, views, and exclusive interviews with security that cut across humanitarian aid. To it becomes easier to do business in Nigeria. Now, Nigeria. We we'll begin the program in the United States where Donald Trump has marked his first 100 days in office. Mr. Trump launched a scathing attack on the media during a rally marking 100 days in office. He told supporters in Pennsylvania that he was keeping one promise after another, dismissing criticism by uh, as fake news by out of touch journalists. Mr. Trump decided to skip the Wise House Correspondents' Dinner, becoming the first U.S. leader to miss the event since an injured Don and Ronald Reagan in 1981. Earlier, huge rallies were held against Mr. Trump's climate change policies. Mr. Trump's approval ratings hover around uh, the 40 percent mark. It is believed to be lower than any other president at the 100-day marker. At the rally in Harrisburg, the president said some not too complimentary things about the media. Let's bring you an excerpt of the speech he made at the rally. Watch this. As you may know, there's another big gathering taking place tonight in Washington, D.C. Did you hear about it? A large group of Hollywood actors and Washington media are consoling each other in a hotel ballroom in our nation's capital right now. They are gathered together for the White House Correspondents' Dinner without the President. And I could not possibly be more thrilled than to be more than 100 miles away from Washington Swamp, spending my evening with all of you and with a much, much larger crowd and much better people, right? Media outlets, like CNN and MSNBC are fake news. Fake news. So just as an example of media, take the totally failing New York Times. Pretty soon they'll only be on the internet. The paper's getting smaller and smaller. You ever notice? Starting to look like a comic book. It's getting so Classic Mr. Trump there. Now, before we get into discussions of how Mr. Trump has fared in his first 100 days in office, let's bring you an interview Mr. Trump had with uh, CBS's John Dickerson. In that interview, Mr. Trump talks about North Korea, how uh, he has changed his thinking about China and what he has learned in his first 100 days in office. Take a look. Take a look. Well, it's a... Uh it's a tough job, but I've had a lot of tough jobs. I've had things that were tougher, although I'll let you know that better at the end of eight years, perhaps eight years, hopefully eight years, but I'll let you know later on. Uh, I think we've done very well with foreign policy. I think we've done very, very well with relationships with other leaders. I think we're doing great on trade deals. It's set, and I think we're doing well. I mean, our country is being out-traded at every single point. We're losing tremendous amounts of money on trade. And I think, actually, I've been very consistent. You know, it's very funny when 
the fake media goes out, you know, which we call the mainstream media, which sometimes I must say is you. But when the you fake mean me personally or uh, your show, I love your show. I call it Deface the Nation. All right, to talk about uh, that and other issues, I am being joined right now in the studio by uh, Mr. Kachi Okizi. He's a legal practitioner and an, and an international trainer and management consultant. Mr. Kachi, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you very much for, Thank you so much, for yeah. coming. Okay, you, you've heard uh, what Mr. Trump said. Uh, you, all, you saw the first clip and the last one. Mm -hmm. All right, what is your assessment of his uh, one, first 100 days in office? Uh, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a difficult one. I don't think we've ever experienced anything like this before. Okay. And so um, it comes, you know, packaged to surprise us. And uh, he, ha he, he is also surprising us, mm. entertaining us. <laughs> in the, in the but I think it would have been funny if it wasn't serious. This is governance. This is world politics. Mm. So much hangs on what happens in the White House globally. Mm. Uh, the markets respond to what, you know, he says. To, to what he says or doesn't say, mm. uh, responds to his body language. Mm. And uh, he has, in my view, uh, taken us to unknown territory. I don't think I, I recall any president mm. who has been so sort of undiplomatic. Mm. You know, he has completely rendered diplomacy uh, irrelevant. <laughs> almost irrelevant. Mm. You know, and so, but still, th there are good things uh, I, that I would. Um, things that I would give him credit for. Well, like what? Well, you, you know, it, it, you may not uh, see the way I see it, mm. but as a politician, his uh, uh, first commitment, obligation, is to, as much as possible, deliver on his promises. Okay. He seems to be doing that as far as his constituency, his core constituency is concerned. Okay. You could see them in the in the, the uh, clip there, clear, yeah, yeah. you know, raving Boy for him. Crowd. Exactly. Mm. So I, I, we're still trying to win ourselves of the apparent misconception that led to the emergence of Trump in the elections. Mm. I think Trump's message is that we ought to uh, perhaps change the way we assess politics and politicians. He is speaking to an audience. He's representing a point of view, mm. and he continues to do so, uh, so far. Mm. So I think that's working for him. Mm. How long that will hold out, I'm not sure. Okay. Because uh, f uh, for me, the uh, indications are that if nothing, after this first 100 days celebration, so to speak, mm. if there's anything to celebrate, <laughs> okay. if after this, uh, in the next, say, uh, 30 to 60 days, nothing concrete happens on the promises. Mm. His failure to get uh, legislative support to change Obamacare, Obamacare yeah. is a big dent. Mm -hmm. His uh, inability to uh, stand firm against North Korea uh, and rather almost appearing to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. just yesterday he said he, he exactly he's to meet, uh, to meet with him. Uh, I, I don't understand that. I really do not know where that came from. Mm. But again, like I said, we ought to be cautious in the way we assess politics. Mm. We all had our assessments, we all had our calculations before the elections, and the results proved us completely mm. wrong. Mm. So we might be backing up the wrong tree here mm. again. So mm. we've got to be careful. So he, I think he is, he is uh, carrying his people along so far. Um, I don't think uh, this will continue far, uh, further down the road. Mm if something really concrete isn't delivered mm. in the next 30 to 60 days. Okay, talking about uh, concrete uh, stuff being delivered, uh, w can you point to any significant achievement? Of course, Obamacare fell flat on his face, but what, apart from signing executive orders, uh, you know, like uh, Obama did in his own first 100 days, uh, you know, what else can you point to? But he appears to have signed more than Obama. <laughs> yes, he has. As a matter of fact, he you has. Know, uh, you know, in, in the short time that yes. he's been there. Yeah. So it looks like we're going to have governance by 
you know, EO executive orders. Executive orders this time, but what he has done. Uh, I, I, one example is that uh, you may not count that as much, mm. but I think for a lot of people he showed leadership when he was uh, called to do so. Mm. You okay. know, with Would his um, uh, national security advisor, Michael Flynn, who, who Michael Flynn, who was found. Uh, you know, wanting when it mattered. Yes. And, uh, I I you know, I I if, if that had lingered, people would have held it against him. Mm. But I think the fact that uh, it was decisive, uh, I think he had a private word with him, mm. and that one uh, did the right thing. Mm. So uh, I I'll count that for him. Mm. Also, the fact that he has managed to... Uh, don't forget, people, don't, people lose sight of what happened leading up to the elections. What is that? The Congress that he has, you know, the, 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 the Congress that he has was divided. His party, actually, is divided, split down the middle, mm. okay? So, whilst we expected him to come hit the ground running, Grand. he has a lot of rebuilding to do, to do for the Republican Party, mm. okay? Before you can get them to the point where they can start performing. They have the majority. They have the majority, yes, but they have the majority and they're singing. They're, they're, there are different majorities within the, 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 <laughs> the, the, the you know, different uh, opinions and, mm. and points of view in the party right now. Yeah. Who are the moderates now? Who are these, you know, this small but really uh, voluble, mm. voluble core that are backing him and going on and screaming in public? I, I, I think time will tell um, I believe that further down the road, we'll begin to see how they actually feel. Why do I say that? The tax reforms, for example. Mm -hmm. When you break it down uh, you know, and analyze uh, some of the analysis that I've read, right. you find that it's actually unlikely to deliver for that core group. Many of them are not going to benefit from these reforms. And mm. the, uh, the, 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 in the long analysis, the reforms are also going to favor the very people that he wants to rein in, okay? <laughs> and, and so the, the, the sort of bogeyman uh, of Wall Street <laughs> and all the people mm. who, who are, you know, the top end of the, of the earning scale, mm. they're the ones who are going to benefit. And when they benefit, what are these, you know, foot soldiers going to say? These, you know, red bleeding heart Republicans, what yes. are they going to say? Mm. So I think we have quite a lot coming. I'll be interested in the next 60 days, mm. more than the first 100 days. Yeah, well, in the last 100 days, the markets have never been as high as they are yeah. now. Mm. So the, the economy is doing, mm. is doing quite well. And do you, do, what do you put down to? The Trump effect? What do you I don't think so. I think that's more uh, to do with what's happening uh, elsewhere. Right. Globally, you know, mm. um, yes, the markets have stilled a little bit. Mm. Um, there, there was a little bit of uh, volatility almost after the election, immediately after it happens. Mm. You know, that's unusual. I mean, that's not unusual. Not unusual okay. So, um, but I think that uh, w w w what is bringing the kind of calm that you see in the markets mm. uh, uh, owes more to what's happening in places like Europe. You know, there was a lot of concern about how Brexit was going to go. It hasn't gone that way. And so after all the anxiety, it looks like there's calm, calm. coming back. Uh, in areas that have been depressed, there have been so-called green shoots of recovery mm. being seen. Um, Latin America, have, uh, despite the mixed messages coming uh, out during the campaigns mm. about what was going to happen, it looks like there's... Um, feared disruptions are not going to happen now. Mm. And so NAFTA, uh, and this is also because of, um, uh, uh, the president himself, Trump has uh, sort of backed down on some of the he extreme has. promises. Yes, he, he promised to call China exactly. a currency manipulator. Yes. He has mm. his back down. He's now uh, using friendlier language with yes. China. Conciliatory uh, terms. Oh, conciliatory, yes. Mm. He's, he's, uh, uh, after causing a storm, yes. he now comes ca uh, closer to Canada and also to uh, Mexico. Yes. Because it would be suicidal to really take on Canada and Mexico. Mexico you know, uh, exactly. Mm. Because that is your market. And, and, and if you're talking about, you know, China has been stealing your jobs, that's what he said yes. in the campaign. Where else do you, if you, if you wanted to sell your products, where else would you well, go? Nigeria, so perhaps. Exactly. <laughs> well, no, certainly not, <laughs> I can tell you. Okay, okay, very well. Uh, we're going to change uh, gears now and uh, focus on another subject, uh, press freedom. Now, uh, 
according to the 2017 World Press Freedom Ranking compiled uh, uh, by the uh, Reporters Without Borders, Nigeria's record of press freedom came down from 111 in 2017, would you believe, to 122 in 2017. This is out of 180 countries graded. With the new record, Nigeria continues to rank alongside countries like countries hostile to press to the free press such as Afghanistan, Chad, the Philippines, Zimbabwe, Colombia and others. Now, Norway, Sweden, Denmark and the Netherlands top the list of the countries with the highest regard for press freedom. In that order, North Korea, Eritrea, Turkmenistan, Syria and China remain at the bottom of the ladder. In a country like Norway, violence against journalists and media is rare, but the situation is different and in, in Nigeria and other countries with negative report about press freedom. The report says uh, in Nigeria it is nearly impossible to cover stories involving politics, terrorism or financial embezzlement. Journalists are often threatened and subjected to physical violence or denied access to information by government officials, police and sometimes even the public itself. Now, Michel Arion is the head of the European Union delegation to Nigeria. He has been in Nigeria for about four years now. At a press conference this afternoon, I asked him his thoughts about the subject. Here is a little on what he had to say. You have, a, I think in Nigeria, journalists should be uh, more um, attentive to being more professional, uh, check their sources, not uh, to, uh, being not doing harm to the to the people by uh, uh, spreading news that may not have been verified, etc. So there is a, a problem of, 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 of quality, there is a problem of sources, there is a problem of ethics. Um, so there is a lot of uh, improvements to, to, to make in, in, in the media. Um, we have seen, it was quite interesting to see in 2015, a lot of state media progressively <laughs> changing from one side to another side. <laughs> so still we see that state media can be slightly biased. All right, uh, we're going to take a short break before we hear what Mr. Kachi Okizi has to say about uh, press freedom in Nigeria. Stay with us. On this program, we'll be bringing you news, views, and exclusive interviews with security that cut across humanitarian aid. It becomes easier to do business in Nigeria. Now, All right, welcome back. Uh, we're still with uh, Mr. Kachi Okeze here on the program. All right, before we went for that break, uh, you heard uh, uh, Monsieur Michel Arion yes. and what he had to say about press freedom. Now, what are your thoughts about press freedom in Nigeria? We've slid on that table. Well, we have. Uh, the uh, concern is that, first of all, this measure is, uh, is a new measure. Right. Okay, so the, the, we, we need to be uh, very clear about right. that. Right. It's, it's less than four years old. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there were previous measures. The, U, the UN Rapporteur used to be uh, regarded as the, uh, the, the, the main um, barometer, mm -hmm. okay, based on the reports. Mm -hmm. Now, um, the concern about this is that this huge slide has happened within the past 18 months mm -hmm. or, or even less than that. Mm -hmm. That is the concern. If you look at the history of press freedom in Nigeria, it has been undulating following the uh, 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 changing color mm. of the government mm. that we've had. Right. During the military, uh, and the, during the military, leading up to the, uh, 1985 or so, before then, you know, when the decrees, the, 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 the dreaded decrees number fours uh, were there, mm -hmm. uh, it, 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 so much happened within a very short time. Mm -hmm. You know, the arrest of journalists, some high-profile cases, 
um, you know, really visible and felt clamp down mm. on the press. Mm. That happened in the military, uh, during the military dispensation. But this is a democracy. But we are in a democratic dispensation. Mm. And this is not just a new transition to democracy. Mm. We, had we had begun to experience a fairly stable you know, process. Yeah. Now, this is a major bump and we need to take uh, notice of it. Right. I think that we can't expect, in my view, government to be bothered about this, to be honest with you. Okay. If this happened under uh, this government, then I think it would be wrong to really expect this government to feel any ways about it. Who should be concerned more than any else? The actors, hmm. the media itself. Should be more concerned. Absolutely, the media itself, the uh, uh, you know sort of the uh, pressure groups, yeah. the lawyers, yes, yeah. the uh, particularly human those involved, in, yeah, the human rights campaign NGOs. groups, and all of those, civil society as a yes, whole, should be more concerned about this, and they're the ones who can uh, do something about this. And the first thing to do is to go into a, a real deep analysis, right. very extensive analysis of what happened, mm. how did we get it so wrong, wrong. how did we drop over 10 points so low. In, in a short time. And, and so uh, first priority would be how to stop it. And I would, we, I don't know how much time we've got, but I, I, I would think that the media itself needs to immediately uh, look at itself. Uh, Self-regulation, there's an example I, 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 I notice. Mm. Um, Self-regulation is, is popular in the UK, okay, uh, the press, uh, complaints commission mm -hmm. that is a model okay. so but you have that w that is usually uh, led by the profession by the media itself mm. it, it's an industry wide but then you have the Ofcom office of the communications Reg uh, regulator mm. now Ofcom regulates everything broadcasting the bigger picture right. if you like the, the, uh, yeah, the bigger picture but the media uh, needs to begin to call itself to order okay, okay? and then civil society needs to keep the Paul's point on. So uh, the media call itself to order. That's right. And then the uh, civil society. That's right. Well, yes, civil society, well, is involved in everything, really. Should mm. raise awareness, mm -hmm. should uh, point out to government what it is, is wrong with wrong. what they're doing, and should also maintain contact with the international partners, the EU, uh, as I, I just saw there in the mm. clip that you played. Mm. Um, and, then, and then lawyers, I think, particularly, this government, the way it has started, the sort of uh, relationship that it has uh, forged for itself with the judiciary uh, is such that I don't think the judiciary will be too quick to do its bidding right now. Mm. I, I think that this is a, it translates into a great opportunity for the judiciary to assert itself against uh, uh, all, all manner of human rights abuses, but in particular, press freedom. Mm. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm afraid we have to leave it there. Yeah, there's so much we can, so much more we can talk about, uh, Mr. Okeze. I've been uh, speaking to Kachi Okeze. He's a legal practitioner, an international uh, trainer, and management consultant. Please get in touch with us uh, on the program. Our uh, you go online. We are on Twitter. Uh, tweet us, and we'll tweet you right back. Uh, at hindsight STV, or you can send us an email on hindsight silverbird at gmail.com. Mr. Okizia, thank you very much for coming on thank the show. Thank you very much. And God uh, bless you. Yes, thank you. All right, so I'll see you. you again next week. Keep watching.